<laughs> Hello guys! Hello! Hi. My name is Augusto, going to Viegas, alright? Please, thank you, maintain your sip of fast all the time. So we are on Vieques Bay for a couple of days checking out the bioluminescent and the lagoon and yeah, should be an awesome 36 hours on this beautiful island. Guarding her nest. I'm not sure if you can see the little heads poking around, but I don't want to get too close and scare her.
pretty hitting the grass, huh? Yeah, it's not going on my photographs, though. Welcome to Puerto Rico. All right, let's go for a walk. So this is our fourth day in Puerto Rico. And we're here for eight days total with our friends. We have six couples all together, yeah? Six people. Oh, three yeah. couples. <laughs> six, six people all together, <laughs> three couples, and our friend has this beautiful beach house on uh, Fajardo, in Fajardo. It's like the northwest tip, northeast. Northeast, northeast little northeast beach, tip. beach town, and it's super, super pretty out there. We've just been spending the last three days on the water. We went to see the bioluminescent bay. We did a kayak on the bay, we yeah. rented a boat, we had a whole secret beach day. We took the plane over to Vieques, which is the island where they have Mosquito Bay and you get to see the bioluminescent there. And that was the most amazing experience, right? Yeah. Jumping on the little plane and um, seeing the aerial view of all the beaches. That was yeah. really cool before that night tour. We need to... Uh, nothing really like it, huh? Yeah, that was amazing. It was It's the brightest bioluminescent day in the world. Where, and it, uh, it got that designation. It had like 600 bioluminescent plankton parts per liter or something like that. Highest density of... And that. now it has triple that. So oh, it was wow. three times brighter than when it got the brightest designation in the world. So yeah. it, was, it was amazing. And it was also a new moon, so practically no light pollution. So we have the glowing bay waters right beneath, right beneath us, and then right above us, there was like a full sky of stars with like all the constellations, and that was really cool to do the boat stargazing. Yeah. And the bio bay. You yeah. You see little fish swim. Um, <laughs> they would eat the eat oh, the yeah. things that ate the plankton, so they would glow as they swam through the water too, and the plankton would light up. And so it looked like ghost fish and leaving trails as they swam. I love that. That was that was really cool. It was like watching spirits in the water. Yeah. Yeah, so that was really, really awesome part of the trip. And then coming back from Vieques, we rented a little catamaran, and, or I guess it's a sailboat technically. A sailboat, and we went to the island of Icacos swam in the beach a little over there, did some snorkeling, and the fish are beautiful. Yeah. We saw a bunch of yellowtail fish, a bunch of, um, I don't know what the name is, but I only, I only know them as blue dories. Uh, <laughs> blue blue tangs. Blue, blue tangs, like from Finding Nemo. We saw a uh, stingray. Oh yeah, the spotted eagle ray. Yeah. That was really, really cool. Um, and yeah, the coral, the purple coral. It's like oh, fan shaped. Like I really, really like that one. It's pretty. I've never seen coral like that before, yeah. so that was really cool. And yeah, today we just did a whole day in Old San Juan. Walking uh, architectural tour. Yeah, we started with the architectural tour and learned a lot about how the buildings were built over the years with all of the European conquerors who settled here. Uh, we actually knew quite a bit about your, the history of Puerto Rico before coming here because we like to research that stuff before coming. I think it's really important to do your research and to know the history of where you travel um, because it's so much more enriching that way. And yeah, we were just talking about this, like the history of Puerto Rico is actually really violent and very tragic originally settled by the Tainos and then Spanish conquerors came in the um <laughs> lost my hat. <laughs> okay. Where is I? Got my hat back. Uh, now Dan's gonna hold the camera so I can hold on to my hat. Um yeah I was saying the Spanish came and settled in the 15th 1500s, right? And basically took over this place was like this is ours now. So yeah, it's kind of tragic, but I think it's important to know, right? To be aware when you're traveling to these places because when you look around you, you recognize that, you know, this is the story of where everything came from. Um, the buildings, the people, the culture, the food, the music, right? Like salsa dancing is huge in Puerto Rico, right? And all of the Caribbean, we're gonna go experience that tonight. Um, but it's a fusion of all these different cultures. Um, Spanish, African, right, and 
all the food even is influenced from the, the blending of these cultures. So yeah, it's really nice architecture. Architectural preservation society. Preservation society. Uh, and so he, he could talk forever on whatever subject he asked him about um, when he came to San Juan. And he really liked the cisterns. <laughs> learned a lot about the cisterns. That was really cool. Aqueducts. There's like hundreds of cisterns under the buildings of um, San Juan. So those are basically like water storage systems that were invented. What, 500 years ago? I don't they know if they were, were invented 500 years no, ago. No, they, they, were built they here started to be 500 built 500 years ago by the Spanish. Um, deprecated eventually by was it the Americans? What? No, no, no. no then the, the Spanish Sp built the Spanish an aqueduct and then decided the, to build the aqueducts and, and then. then they weren't as important, so they kind of went, went out of use. But then during Maria, they lost water and power and realized hey, maybe we should keep these aqueducts in use because they're very effective at storing water. So yeah. that's actually coming back now. And a All huge part of the work that um, that Andy, the, the guide, is doing yeah. in consulting you know, in the reconstruction and restoration of these yeah. aqueducts and um, I think at, uh, infrastructure resilience is on the forefront of every, everyone's mind since Hurricane Maria came and knocked down water and power everywhere. He said where they were at in San Juan, it was no water the power for four months. We were That's without gross. water for a week during the winter storm in Texas. Four months would be tough. Yeah. Really, really hard. Yeah, so San Juan and Puerto Rico looks to be recovering quite a bit from Hurricane Maria. It's definitely not fully back when we went to this art gallery. And Cafe that isn't open yet yeah. because they just got hit so hard with the cost of maintaining the building and fixing the building from the hurricane's damage that you know it's taken them like over five years to bring the cafe back. Places like these uh, really do count on tourism to help support the economy. So they definitely want people to travel to Puerto Rico and to so come to Puerto Rico. Isn't that gorgeous? I don't even know if this is going to come out because it's so windy, but there's a kite over there that looks like a squid and a Dementor from Harry Potter. Cool fact about this building behind us. It is situated right on this historical site and it is now a school for art. I think it's called the Plastic Art School, but it used to be an insane asylum. at Seven Seas Beach today in Fajardo. And it's the day of Assumption, so everything else around the island is closed. Restaurants, grocery stores. Um, it's like a major, major Catholic holiday celebrated here on the island. So 
We're gonna take a walk through these mangrove forests and find a little secret beach. What I love about Puerto Rico is it is so, so green here. It's, there's so much nature and I just love being surrounded by green, the trees, the ocean, animals, a lot, a lot of wild animals like hens, cats, dogs, beautiful birds. And yeah, I've just missed being close to the ocean after living in Austin for the last year. Puerto Rico is so, so close and easy to get to. It's four and a half hours direct flight. There's so many options for getting here. And once you're here, you have access to so many beaches and islands. And not only that, but there's so much culture and history here. It really does feel like you have a little bit of Europe here in the Caribbean and so accessible from the mainland. So I'm really excited to continue coming back here, you know, multiple times a year uh, for a quick getaway. You know, Hawaii for us used to be our spot we would go to um, to get beach and sand and like warm waters to go swimming and snorkeling in. Um, but now from Austin, that's like an eight hour direct flight, which is really, really long for us. So Puerto Rico's our new place to go. It's definitely super easy to get around. You can rent a car at the airport. Um, GPS is obviously really easy to use. There's good cell service in most parts around the island. And um, the only thing is a lot of the directions like on GPS are in kilometers, but I mean, the GPS is gonna tell you anyway, you know, when to turn and where to go. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, people here are really, really friendly, obviously. Uh, you use US dollars, so there's no currency conversions. And um, most of the people here speak English. Um, I mean, it, for sure it helps if you, if you already speak Spanish. It's just fun to be able to talk to the locals a little bit in Spanish, but if you don't and you only speak English, you can get around totally fine. So we just came out of this little clearing behind me um, and here you can see the ocean, which is gorgeous. There is Seven Seas Beach. So we walked through this mangrove forest to get to this opening um, and you can just see the water in this little cove right here. We're gonna keep walking forward that way until we find the secret beach. I think it's kind of funny. We still call it a secret beach because really if it's on the internet, like it's definitely not a secret anymore. Um, there's definitely people at it, but it's not gonna be as crowded as some of the main beaches. So if you're okay with doing a couple miles hike, especially with some chairs and towels and food and water, very important, then it's a great place to go and hang out for the afternoon. Yeah, so tomorrow is our last full day on Puerto Rico and um, it's just flown by so fast. We've had a total of six days here so far and I honestly feel like I could stay another week. So yeah, I mean, during that time, if you had seven days, this is what I would prioritize. I would definitely do the bioluminescent bay on Vieques Island. Um, if you can make it there, it's so, so beautiful and the most dense, densely populated um, bioluminescent plankton in the world. Um, let's see, next I would definitely take a charter boat and just go island hopping. There are some beautiful beaches around the main island of Puerto Rico and they're so easy to get to by boat. Definitely recommend a full day charter, especially if you can catch sunset on the water. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do sunset on the water this time because our captain was uh, a little tired from being up late the night before, but we're definitely have to get into that again with him next time. And I definitely recommend a walk around old San Juan. We had a phenomenal architecture walking tour uh, with Andy, who's like the founder of the, um, it's like an archeological preservation society here in San Juan. And um, for those who travel a lot and love learning about history, 
um, when they travel and architecture. I think the tour is going to be a little bit elementary in the information that he presents, but I think you could definitely reach out to him and schedule a more private tour if you feel like you want to go deeper in some of these subjects. So that's something Dan and I are definitely going to do next time we come back. And I will drop the link below in the video notes so that um, you can reach out to him if you want. Really, really cool guy, very smart, and a lot of interesting information about the history of the city. And yeah, other than that, just take it easy, go on the beach, swim in the water. So yeah, other than those three things, I mean, you're on a beautiful island, so I would definitely say take it easy, relax, enjoy the beach, enjoy the water, and just sunbathe and take it slow. I mean, that's what going to an island is really all about, right? To get away from things and really reconnect with yourself, with nature. So I highly recommend just having a couple of days to chill and really have no itinerary except what piques your interest that day. absolutely love this part of the hike because you're just surrounded by mangrove trees that are arching over and connecting over at the top and so you just feel like you're in an enchanted forest and you're just tunneling your way through the forest to get to the beach so really really cool part of the hike. I love these snake plants look at how green and lush they are gorgeous. Made it! Here it is! Check out these tide pools, how pretty they are and how clear the water is. I could just sit in them for hours. Yeah, from here you can just pretty much walk down all the way to either end and park out your chairs and just sit, play with water, go for a swim, get some sun, and yeah, hopefully stay for the sunset. Although, uh, I think the hike back might be a little dark and treacherous if you're gonna actually stay the, for the sunset here and then hike back in the dark, so. So yeah, it's a bit of a trade-off here if you decide you want to stay for sunset and hike back in the dark or head back earlier and still have enough light to see the path. Found here some wild coconuts, but they are way too little, too young to, to harvest. That dog has the biggest stick in his mouth. <laughs> Something else that I wanted to share was just around how, um, I guess how cheap it is to actually get around here and to stay here and have a really nice holiday. Um, so when we were walking around Old San Juan, we checked out a couple of really, really beautiful hotels and um, some like really nice, three four-star hotels were only pricing at around $150 to $200 a night. And so we were like, oh my God, that's amazing. Right? Like, why don't we just get a hotel in Old San Juan next time we come here? Um, this way we can explore more of the city. Um, if you want to charter your own boat, it's definitely going to cost a lot more to get around to the islands. I think for us, six people, it was around 1300 bucks for the whole day, um, but there's also really good options like a water taxi that takes you directly to these beaches and they run on a set schedule. So you have a really easy time planning your trip too if you wanna work with those and use that to get around the islands. Also with food, I feel like it's super reasonably priced. It's definitely not like if you travel to touristy parts of the world. Um, usually you feel like those prices are really high and they're sort of trying to like gouge you a little bit and I did not get that feeling at all here. The only thing is if you go to some of the local grocery stores, 
Um, Puerto Rico does import a lot of their food and so you will find that some staples like fruit and vegetables may be very expensive and actually the quality might not be very good. But if you go to Costco, if you have a Costco membership, you can get access to all the things that you're used to at home, which is super convenient and very reasonably priced. And we've been cooking most of our meals with the ingredients we got from Costco and it's worked out so, so well. So yeah, those are some tips for how to budget for your trip. So like I said, tomorrow's our last day here on the beautiful Puerto Rico island. And as far as what we're gonna do tomorrow, I think it's just gonna be a trip to El Yunque National Park. It's a beautiful rainforest here. Okay, so my battery just died, so I'm gonna switch to my phone for a second and look who found me. It's Howdy. <laughs> Hi. Um, so yeah, tomorrow we're gonna go to El Yunque National Forest or I think it's actually National Park, which is a beautiful rainforest on the main island of Puerto Rico. And we should be able to get in some good waterfall hikes. Hopefully we'll see some wildlife. I'd love to see one of the national frogs here. It's called the Koki, a really, really cute name. Um, and yeah, we're gonna get some amazing food in the morning. There's a place in Fajardo called um, Cafe Vista who, is a friend of our friends that we're staying with here in Fajardo. And for dinner, I'm really excited to try La Estacion, which is a delicious uh, barbecue place. So yeah, it should be a really nice way to end the trip. Check out this view. Wow. Gorgeous. The National Park. I think that's Palavino. That island's owned by the Conquistador, which is a huge resort. Hey cuties! I see you! <laughs> oh wow, I think there's at least like six or seven in there. So good. Right? Mmm, ready to eat you. cutie. Hello. Look how cool are those roots. Wow, what a beautiful canopy. Nature's best. Oh, I've never seen one in the wild. Bromeliad. Bromeliad. Oh, how pretty. So cool. This little trail, how pretty is that? Your shells are so flat. Uh huh. How interesting. Look at these flowers. How pretty these flowers are. So cute, this little guy. So now we're climbing the summit to a tower, Breton. And I think it's called that because it literally, lo literally looks like a medieval tower. and it's this really nice and easy little 45 minute each way trail out and back where you get to go to the top of the tower 
and get some really nice views of the rainforest. And check out these trees all around. So, so beautiful. Juan Diego Falls, and we're gonna climb over to the right and see if we can get to the second fall sitting on the first one. And we're gonna climb and see if we can get to the second falls. Let's go. Up from that part, and there's a little bit of a mud scramble up here, but apparently there's a really nice waterfall up there, so let's go check it out. There it is, there's the second waterfall. Oh, gosh, look at this snapper. That's awesome. Delicious. 